A prank a day keeps the dog leash away. Welcome back to Good News Next Week, everybody. I'm James Evan Pilato for MediaMonarchy.com. We've got that story, plus turning abandoned houses into greenhouses. But first, on this 37th episode of Good News Next Week, for the week of October 17th, 2016, we get a tweet from our buddy James Corbett at Corbett Report. <gasps> this just in. Americans are losing faith in democracy. Never mind the fact that we're supposed to be a constitutional republic and aren't really either. But anyway... The values that support American democracy are deteriorating. Large numbers of Americans across party lines have lost faith in their democracy, and many will not accept the legitimacy of this selection. I mean, election. Those were the stark findings from a survey the Washington Post performed October 6th through October 8th of more than 3,000 registered voters, fully 40% of whom say, quote, I have lost faith in American democracy, end quote. 6% smartly indicate they never had faith in the system in the first place. Overall, barely more than half, just 52%, say, quote, I have faith in American democracy, end quote. Now, what gets really fun with this story from the Bezos Post is when you scroll down and look and see that there are 1,400 comments and counting. And a lot of them point out that they stopped trusting corporate lackeys like the Washington Post to keep them informed of what's really going on. So this is why Americans losing faith in democracy isn't, oh my God, chicken little, the sky's falling. It's fantastic news because it's betrayed them if it was ever there for them in the first place. And we've said this a million times, your churches, your schools, your banks, all of it corrupt. And the sooner we leave them and the sooner we create our own decentralized alternative, the sooner we can actually turn this thing around. And it's not going to come down to some phony baloney rigged America's next top president. That sounds awful dour for a Good News Next Week episode, but again, I like knowing how the magic tricks are done, and I think looking at some of these stories in a positive way is a great way to see through the BS and use your media literacy and see what's really going on. And don't fall for not only the left-right paradigm, but the whole sham of it all. Our cover story this week for Good News Next Week comes from a first-time Good News Next Week tweeter at the Johnny Gentle, who notes this happened in his own Chicago backyard. Construction sign hacked to flash disparaging exclamation marks and bad swears and stuff. Oh no, it just says, Rom lies, children die. A construction sign flashing at the intersection of Grand and Central on Sunday stopped a lot of passers-by, but not with traffic info. The sign read, quote, Rom lies, children die. It flashed its disparaging neon message off and on for hours just across the street from the Chicago Police Department's Belmont Central District Station at 5555 West Grand Avenue. It's pretty harsh, but unfortunately a lot of people think it's true, said Maria Santiago, 28, stopping as she walked by to take photos, of course, for social media. Now, hopefully in this selfie culture, they can go beyond that and wonder... What are they talking about with Rahm Emanuel? Oh, you mean when I run a start page search that says Rahm lies, kids die, you can see that death in Chicago has skyrocketed under his control? Now it's interesting also to know you dig a little further back and you realize and remember, oh that's right, Rahm Emanuel was the very first guy Barry Satoro appointed to his cabinet. Rahm Emanuel has a pretty interesting family with some pretty interesting connections, and you can go even to Time Magazine, not a conspiracy site, and read all about how Rahm Emanuel's dad was part of the Ergun, a Zionist terrorist organization who blew up the King David Hotel and many, many other Palestinian killing activities. These are the gangsters running Chicago still, so we should not be surprised of the whole Obama crew and essentially the murder and mayhem of Chicagoland in some ways kind of spread all around the country, purge style. Now, that's getting really dark. Let's get to the fun side of this. Pranks. A prank a day keeps the dog leash away. That's what Jello Biafra said. He also said it's fun monkey-wrenching the New World Order, and I heard him say that probably a couple of decades ago. I think Noam Chomsky took it on later and made it a book title, but basically you can start page about hacking transportation signs and you can get everything from Jalopnik to the Washington Post to stuff you know, and it can be done. And ultimately it can be fun. We've seen all the signs about, you know, caution zombies ahead and all the fun, not necessarily political things, but ultimately pranks and this fun spirit 
keeps us young and keeps us alive. And some of the other things, like putting out of order signs on government things that aren't really out of order. Simple prank kind of things like that is a great way to keep us young and a great way to monkey wrench the new world order. A reminder, everything we say and play is included down in the show notes, so you can follow the links and you can do more research for yourself. Our final story this week goes to Detroit from Chicago for a little bit of positivity, which you wouldn't think you'd be able to find. But as the Atlantic notes, when Stephen Mancouch first saw the house at 3347 Burnside in Detroit in 2013, it was buckling and scarred and burnt. An artist named Andy Malone, who lived nearby, had just purchased the lot for $500 and was hoping to find some way to bring it back to life. Mancouche, an architect, and his partner, Abigail Murray, a ceramicist, floated a proposal to do just that by commandeering the house's foundation and repurposing it as a sort of plant nursery. We can include tons of information about how to do this, and the exciting thing is to then look around and go, hey, wait, could I get a lot for $500? We've been talking about on the morning show that really, cities are dead, and with that crazy Pentagon video we played in the morning show this morning about they will become these dystopic, you know, hellscapes. So why are we in them? We now have the technology and the connections to decentralize, go open source, and start building our own communities and our own towns, and people are doing that. They're doing it from Colorado to New Mexico to New Hampshire and all around. And again, that's learning our way forward. Some of our other stories this week using hashtag good news next week. Our buddy Brock West, as we go from greenhouses to houseless, harnessing social media to reconnect homeless people with their families. And one from at Apniac. The EpiPen went from $300 to $30 and now to $3 using open source and 3D printing. Again, another decentralized way that we are winning. Our last note, and just a little bit of fun, a Louisiana flood victim won a million dollars in a lottery. Things can change. Things can turn around. It won't always happen with a lottery or with a luck. It'll happen with turning off the garbage that does not support you and working towards what you really love. Hopefully, you enjoy and love and resonate with independent, non-commercial alternative media such as this. I'm just one as part of a huge amount of people who have all cut the cord, cut off their cell service, deactivated their Facebook page and done all the different things to disconnect and remove their consent from the state. We'll do it slowly but surely. And I've been online since 9-11-05 and I can only do it with your support at MediaMonarchy.com slash support. Would love it if you go there and sign up to give us a little monthly donation because that helps keep alternative media going and growing. If you've got good news stories, some of the ways that we are winning, tweet them, hashtag good news next week. And again, as we always say, if you're not on any of the social pitfalls by this point, you are lucky and it's almost the end of 2016. You can always email me, james at mediamonarchy.com. This is your Good News Next Week episode for the week of October 17th. I am James Evan Pilato from mediamonarchy.com, reminding you, as always, my friends, like Jello Biafra said, don't hate the media, become the media. Take care. <laughs>